Hey there, Mr. Sutton here bringing you the Precal Honors 6.3 Extra Practice Solutions on Applications of Vectors. On this problem, we're given two points, A and B, and we want to figure out the point that's four-thirds of the way from A to B. So actually, we're going a little bit further than point B on this one because our fraction's bigger than one. So we're going to start by getting directions just to get from A to B. So the component form of a vector, that's going to be 8 minus 5, comma, 4 minus 10. So that means we have 3, comma, negative 6 as that component form. And then to get point P, we need to have our starting point, which is 5, comma, 10, to which we will add 4 thirds of this component form. So 4 thirds of 3, comma, negative 6. So for the next step, let's actually multiply 4 thirds by this vector. 4 thirds times 3, the 3's cancel, you just end up with 4 for that piece. And then uh, 4 thirds times negative 6, well, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2, times 4 is negative 8. So all we have to do now is add the original point and this component form together. 5 plus 4 gives us a new x value of 9. And then 10 plus negative 8 gives us a new x value of 2. For this problem, we want the point that is 3 fifths of the way from point A to point B. Let's start by getting directions, a component form, to get from just point A to point B. So that would be negative 1 minus negative 7, or plus 7, comma, negative 1 plus 4, which gives us the component form 6, comma, 3. So now we have to take point A, negative 7, comma, negative 4, and add 3 fifths of these directions here. So let me distribute this 3 fifths. We have uh, 6 times 3 is 18 over 5, so that's 18 fifths. And then we also have 3 times 3 over 5, so 9 fifths. Adding this together, negative 7 plus 18 fifths, well, this is really going to be negative 35 fifths. So with 18, that's going to give us negative 17 fifths. And then negative 4, we can think of that as negative 20 fifths. So add that to 9 fifths, and you've got negative 11 fifths. On this problem, we're trying to find the distance, the length of a segment between these two three-dimensional points. So we're essentially using the distance formula, Pythagorean theorem, with three coordinates instead of two. So we'll have the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. So plugging things in, we've got the square root of 2 minus 9 squared plus 5 minus 6 squared plus 11 minus 5 squared. So let's see here. This is going to be negative 7 squared, which is 49. This is negative 1 squared, which is 1. And this is 6 squared, which is 36. So this is 50 plus 36 is 86. And square root of 86, I don't think that's divisible by any perfect squares. So this is as good as it gets. On this problem, we want the length of a segment between these two three-dimensional points. So we'll use the 3D distance formula. We have square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. Plug in these two points in. That's the square root of 1 minus negative 5, so plus 5 squared. Negative 7 minus 2 squared and 9 minus 6 squared. So 1 plus 5 squared, that's going to be 36. This here is going to be negative 9 squared, so 81. And over here, 3 squared is going to give us 9. So adding all of this together, let's see, 81 plus 9 is 90, plus 36 is 126. And is this divisible by any perfect squares? Well, these digits add up to 9, so it's actually divisible by 9. Let's see now, 9 goes into 99. 11 times, and this is 27 more than that. So uh, let's see, that would be 14 then, times 9 would give us this. So 3 radical 14 would be our final simplified answer. For this problem, we're trying to find the midpoint of these two points. So we're essentially averaging the x values, the y values, and the z values together. So we've got uh, x1 plus x2 over 2, and the same thing for the other two coordinates. So we have negative 11 plus 23 over 2, 8 plus 8 over 2, and 11 plus negative 3 over 2. 
So this is going to be 12 over 2, which is 6. 16 over 2 is 8. And 8 over 2 is 4. On this problem, we're trying to find the midpoint of these two points. So we're essentially going to average all the x, y, and z values together. So we've got x1 plus x2 over 2, and the same thing for the y values and the z values. So then we've got negative 3 plus negative 13 over 2, negative 9 plus 3 over 2, and 1 plus 13 over 2, commas separating all those. So this is negative 16 over 2, which is negative 8. We've got negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. And finally, 14 over 2 gives us 7. To do this vector algebra, let's start by distributing this 2 to the second vector. So this is going to be the vector 8, comma, negative 2, comma, 4. And now we'll just add the x, y, and z values separately. So 3 plus 8 is going to give us 11, comma, 8 plus negative 2, that's going to be 6, comma, negative 2 plus 4 is going to be 2. For this problem, looks a little bit scary here. But let's start by distributing all these factors out in front. So we have 6 distributed to this first vector. That's going to be 6, comma, 18, comma, negative 18. Distributing 11 to the next one, we've got 88, comma, 77, comma, negative 55. And to make my life a little easier, I'm actually going to distribute negative 5 to all of these. So I'm going to have a plus outside, and inside I'm going to have 15, comma, 35, comma, 45. Now I have to add all the x's, all the y's, and all the z's. So we have 6 plus 88 is 94, plus 15 is going to be 109. Next we have 18 plus 77 would be 95, plus 35 is going to be 130. And finally, negative 18 plus negative 15, that's negative 73 plus 45, that's going to be what, negative 28? There we go. To find the dot product of these two three-dimensional vectors, I have to get the factors of the x's, the y's, and the z's, and uh, add all those products separately. So we've got 1 times 5, plus negative 8 times 2, plus 6 times 1. So that's 5, minus 16, plus 6. So that's essentially 11 minus 16, or negative 5. On this problem, I've got some choices as to what order I do things in. It turns out you can do these multiplications in any order you want, but I'm going to distribute this 3 and then do the dot product. So this first vector I'm going to rewrite as negative 21, comma, negative 9, comma, 3. And now doing the dot product, I have to multiply all the x's, multiply the y's, multiply the z's, and then add those products together. So we have negative 21 times negative 5, plus negative 9 times 8, plus 3 times negative 2. So now this is going to come out to, this is 105, minus 72, minus 6. 105 minus 72, that's going to be 33 minus another 6 is going to be 27. On this problem, to find the magnitude of this vector, we essentially just have to use Pythagorean theorem, but with three coordinates instead of two. So we'll have the square root of negative 4 squared plus 4 squared plus 7 squared. So this is square root of 16 plus 16 plus 49. So let's see here. This is 32 plus 49 is going to be 81. Square root of 81 is 9. On this problem, we're trying to find the magnitude of this vector. So we essentially have to square all of these, add them together, and square root it, kind of like a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So we have the square root of negative 11 squared plus 1 squared plus 10 squared, which is the square root of, let's see, 121 plus 1 plus 100. This is going to be 122, so 222 square root. And, well, let's see here. If you split this up, uh, you would have 2 times 111, which, let's see, 111 is divisible by 3, right? Um, so what could I split that up into? 3 times 35, but that splits up into 5 and 7. Um, so this doesn't really get any better, it looks like.